thank you, Mundy. Uh, we just saw her on the keynote stage, so, so I think she might have sprinted over here. It's Stephanie Tronzo, Senior Vice President of Oracle Industries. Great job up there. Thank you. Running in heels is, is also a lot of fun, so I did run over here. Yeah, you didn't, you didn't break anything? Or, no, uh, no. I'm, I'm here in one piece. Good, good. We, we need you here in one piece. We've yeah. got to get through this. Yeah. Okay, but we're going to throw you a hard one to start okay, out with. So, great. you know, your panel uh, and Mike Cecilia's, Cecilia's industry keynote hit on a lot of interesting initiatives. So, give us a recap. Okay. Break recap. it all down. Okay. Break, it, break down an hour. No, it was longer. It was like an hour and 10 minutes. Yeah. So, break yeah. that all okay, down. Okay, yeah. this is the 60 second version of yeah. that. Basically, what we're trying to talk about is the fact that industries are not silos, they're interconnected ecosystems, right? So you think about, you know, I don't know, pick anything, pick the coffee mug that you're drinking out of, right? It's not just a retail transaction. Somebody built something somewhere. There's a manufacturing plant somewhere. There's energy that's powering that. There's communications that's running the digital connection underneath it. So our focus in that conversation was showing exactly how interconnected all of the industries are and how things like applied AI are really powering that connection across all of the industries. One of my favorite uh, parts of the keynote for me was just how many ways Oracle touches our yes. customers. Customer, it's one of my favorite things to talk about. Um, most of us don't even know it. Can you just hit on that for a second? Yeah, I think, you know, it is really fascinating. I have, I'll tell you a story actually that, that has happened to me. I walked into a hotel, I went to go check into the hotel and at the desk while I'm checking in, the person who was talking to me and checking me in was like, this is an Oracle system that I'm working on here at this, you know, while they're checking me in. So it was yeah. a really cool experience of seeing, even in my personal daily life, how you know ubiquitous Oracle technology is behind the scenes of everything we're doing all day long. You were the cus you were our customer's I was customer. Exactly right. <laughs> I was the customer's customer. Yes. That's, that's exactly. how I yeah, that's how I feel when I order Starbucks, yeah. which I've done about 14 times this week. <laughs> yeah. Actually, when when Kendall walks around, those little blips that like the little data charts and the little <laughs> things, they pop up in her head. They're yeah. flying around in real life. Exactly. Yeah. She's like, oh, Oracle, oh, Oracle. Yes, we're <laughs> Oracle. Yeah. They really, they really, I think that there's something like, I don't know, don't, don't quote me on fact check, whoever's fact checking, but it's like something like 98% of the Vegas Strip runs on Oracle. That's exactly right, yeah. yeah. So you can walk up and down this strip and no matter what you're doing, whether it's buying something, eating something, checking into a room, that's Oracle behind the scenes running all of that. Exactly. Yep. Um, increasingly, all of these interactions are being supercharged, as you talked about applied AI, but being supercharged by AI. And before we dive in, can you give us examples of big challenges, big industry challenges that AI is really help, helping to solve right yeah, now? Yeah, absolutely. So healthcare, I mean, it's one that touches everybody again, right? So, you know, if you have a body, if you have a brain, if you have a mind, if you have anything, you're going to see a doctor at some point in your life, right? right. One of the big challenges in healthcare is switching from being reactive when something's wrong to being proactive with your health so you're preventing things in the first place. One of the ways that AI is helping us kind of address that challenge is we're using things like Gen AI to create natural language conversations with your physician in a way that's um, helping them not have to spend their evenings entering data for the fourth, fifth, eighth, twentieth time about you. Um, being able to do those kinds of things with AI changes the whole game of what your interaction is going to be like with your doctor. Yeah, one of those uh, examples is Oracle Clinical Digital Assistant. Yeah, right? my that, favorite. Yeah, yes, I was say, my can, favorite. Can we just I, can we hit on that for one second and then we can move on? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, our Clinical Digital Assistant is doing some of the things I just mentioned. So right. imagine that you're sitting with your doctor, and how many times have you been at the doctor where they have a tablet in front of them? They're not looking at you. Right. You know, you're there to talk about your health, and instead they're you know entering your weight for the 80th yeah. time. It's very impersonal. It's very impersonal, right? Yeah. And that's not why people go into medicine. They go into medicine to help people, right? Right. So we want to fix that by creating, and it's very fascinating because we're using AI to create more human interactions. Right. Which sometimes people. Feel Feel like AI is going to take away from the human interaction, but it's actually assisting. Right. So that clinical digital assistant, what it's doing is giving the physician information before they even walk in the room to talk to you, so they don't have to do that work on a screen. They can look at you while they're having that interaction. It's going to listen and pay attention to the conversation, and whenever you're finished, it's going to produce a note for the doctor to look at that summarizes your visit, says what you need to do next, what medications they've prescribed, and all of that is happening for the doctor instead of them having to do it while they're working with you. Right, or after yeah. the fact, preventing even more so physician burnout, right? Which we are seeing for sure. all the time, too. Exactly. Yeah. 
Yep. Yeah, and I think you can, it, you see that happen in all the other industries as well. We we're talking to Skydance Animation. They were talking about, you know, the the technology doing some of the mundane, repetitive yes. tasks so that the storytellers can get back to building the great characters, telling the great, I the love great that. stories. Yeah. And that's a good segue for uh, my next question, which is about applied AI. Mm -hmm. um, Mike, talk about applied AI. What do we mean when we say that? And how is Oracle enabling that? Yeah, well, and, and you know, I think we've all seen, I'm just gonna reflect on what you said for a second. I think we've all seen the memes that are like, we don't want AI creating our music and our right, art. We want right. it to do our laundry and you know, clean our kitchen and whatever, yeah. right? And I think that the way we think about applied AI is rather than um, these big science fiction concepts, what we're trying to do is embed the AI in the industry applications in the way that the industry needs it. So without even having to do anything, you're getting the benefit of some of that AI baked right into the industry application. So when we say applied AI, we're saying, we're gonna do that work for you, we're gonna understand what the industry needs and we're gonna bake it right into the application itself. Yeah, that's that's great, and where it should be um, in, in our lives. Can you uh, give some examples? You talked earlier about uh, you know across industries, but some examples of how Oracle is enabling this to work across industries. Yeah, so let's talk about um, let's think about retail for a second. So in retail, and you just mentioned sort of like the bubbles that are popping up when yeah. you're going to Starbucks, right? Understanding information about weather, understanding information um, about where there's going to be a, a brick and mortar property that's being built next. That's construction, that's another data set. All of that information coming together, now I can predict, you're not gonna just buy a coffee, you're actually gonna go next door and you're gonna buy a sweater too because we know that there's a cold spell coming. We know that they just put in a new store next to the Starbucks that you like shopping at. Yeah. So, taking all of these different sources of data from different industries and bringing them together so that what actually changes is the experience of our customers' customers, right? That experience is not seen through the lens of five or six different industries. It's seen through the lens of your experience of going to Starbucks, being cold, and noticing there's a store you really like next door and walking in to buy a sweater. So that's how we're thinking about bringing AI into the, the kind of cross-industry scenarios. So even though those are two separate companies, this actually does happen to me. Yep. So I live in Santa Monica. I live on this, I live off the street called Man Montana Avenue. Montana yep. Avenue, you just walk, you get your coffee, you get whatever you need, you shop, you do all that, right? So this would get yep. companies talking to each other then, right? Mm -hmm. I, I the, the data shows I walk into Starbucks, Starbucks, I grab my coffee and next door I'm picking up my sweater and this is allowing the two companies to then profit off of that. That's right, okay. that's exactly right. Yeah, and I think, you know, the, the other aspect of it is that what we're trying to do is make sure that that data is fueling intelligence and insights for your business to use, but your data adds that last extra mile. So the customer's additional data, that's where they kind of come into the picture, right? So we're using all of this information to create insights, to build models, that applied AI that's baked right into the applications. But now you as a customer can add your proprietary information, your additional data, and make it even more nuanced, even more specific. And that's what we saw in the Art of the Possible with Addie, yes. the character Addie. Yes. Um, she, the, the promotion that she got for the Cabana Lounge, I think it was. That's was, right. So she checked into a hotel. When she checked in, she was, I think, inspired by promos and discounts or something. Yep. And they said, well, guess what? We're going to give you a free dessert at the Cabana Lounge. So she had her hospitality. She then went into restaurants. It was um, That was a great example. Addie loves dessert. Yeah, so, I bet. <laughs> I bet. Um, okay, what use cases are you most excited about? Oh, that's such a hard question, actually, isn't it? There's so many. You know, I think some of the ones that we've already talked about are pretty exciting because it's all about personalizing experiences, but doing it in a way that does not feel invasive, that is still adding value to you. And I think that's the trick, is figuring out how to make sure in every one of these industries, the things that we're doing is adding additional value. Um, one of the use cases that I think is really cool, we talk a lot about saving lives in healthcare, but there are a lot of other industries that have you know, very high risk, um, very difficult challenges to solve, like construction, for example. Right. So we just heard in the keynote earlier a very sad statistic, which every single day there are five deaths on work sites in the U.S., every single day. 
So we're doing things like um, using vision AI to look at a construction site and not only detect where there may be a safety issue, but actually predict, predict. Yeah. when there may be one. So right. you know, before you even are having to solve for that safety issue, preventing it in the first place. And those kinds of use cases are game changers, not just because it's really cool to be able to go buy a sweater when you need one, but because we're saving lives. Like yeah. that's literally what we're doing. Yeah. Why do you think that Oracle's more holistic approach is a winning one for customers when it comes to AI? I think because customers don't need Lego blocks, they need solutions. Right. And the way that we're looking at applying AI into our industry solutions, but, but more importantly, we're doing it with all of our horizontal tech underneath of it. So you get security baked in because you have OCI, you have our infrastructure, you get all of the benefits of the way that we think about database and therefore you need all of the, all the things that we just talked about are data sources that you need to make sure that you're integrating correctly. Um, and we're connecting the dots between our back office and front office applications as well with our industry applications. So you get this entire suite. You know, we're talking about industry suites because they're, they're truly end to end. I think that's, that's the key. Our customers don't want to have to do all of that themselves. They want to innovate. They want to do what they do, what the best. So we're helping bring all of those things together. Right, and, and, and they don't want to think, they don't even want to think about the technology no. providing it, right? That's maybe part of the, 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 the beauty of applied AI as well, is they don't want to think about, I think as Steve Miranda said, they don't want to think about Salesforce automation. They don't want to think about supply chain management. They want to think about an order, a customer, exactly. a delivery. Um, and, and so that kind of changes uh, how you think about what we're delivering. It's a solution, not a technology. I think they want to think about how they curate those experiences for their own customers. They don't want to think about the details of what is necessary to do it in the underlying stack. Right. Why is Oracle best suited to help industries take on these challenges and make this happen? You know, Larry says this, and, and, so I, and I think it's fantastic. You can't just solve part of a problem you have to solve the whole problem. Yeah. And so when we're looking at these big challenges, I think that we're so well suited because we are looking at it holistically. We're not looking at it piecemeal, we're not solving bits and pieces of it. We're saying, what does that solution need to look like end to end? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thanks Do you sense. see some industries jumping into AI more quickly than others? Um, I hope they all do, but yes, <laughs> I do. I think, you know, some of the industries, it's interesting. I feel like there's always this um, leapfrogging that happens, right? So one industry will get a little bit ahead. They'll do something that's a breakthrough, but that breakthrough then becomes the standard for every other right. industry. So every one of the industries, I think, is doing something fairly interesting. But what I think is going to be really cool is when they start borrowing from each other. And that's going to really accelerate for everybody. Um, healthcare, obviously, I see as, as a place where that's really going to be picked up fast. It has to be. There are so many things that need to change. And I think to your point earlier, where you can um, do things more efficiently, automate things, it doesn't always have to be sort of, like I said, these science fiction use cases. We'll get to those. But doing the things that make the business operate better, that's easy, that's fast, that's stuff that I see people doing today. When you're out talking to customers, what are they most interested in when it comes to AI? And then on the other hand, what are they most concerned about? Um, they're most interested in what is real. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I think that's, that's a lot of uh, the conversations that I have are, you know, AI has become just such a topic of conversation. What are the things that are realistic to really do with it today? How can I impact my business today? Um, I think the things that I hear concerns around are things like privacy, security, you know, how do I make sure that that data is going to be protected, that it's going to be used in a responsible way, it's going to be used in a way that um, their clients feel good about it, that they're getting value from it, and that they're not, you know, having a trust issue. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Well, final question here, we, we already asked you um, kind of what has you excited about some of the applied AI stuff. You talked about, you know, being able to save lives. Anything else that has you really excited when it comes to AI? I am, I mean, honestly, the tr as a consumer myself, 
I am excited when I get served up ads. <laughs> but, you know, I really am. Yeah. I, I will buy the Starbucks and I yeah. will buy the sweater and right. I will buy the things that people are serving up to me. So I'm kind of excited about how my own life is changing as right. a result of AI. It's pretty cool to see it. As yeah. our customer's customer. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I get excited only when it's something that I didn't think I wanted rather than that's right. the best. Yeah. You're yeah. like, who knew I wanted this? But wow, I love it. Yeah, exactly. very cool. Excellent. Thank you so much, Stephanie, yeah, for joining thank us. You guys. For coming on. This thank is you great. Guys. Thank you. All right, we're going to take a quick break, but don't go anywhere. We've got lots still to cover here on Oracle TV.